Hello and welcome to Solo Power Dead Eye Rifle. Now then, you've seen what build this is for and what build this is not for. I would recommend that actually you try the things it's not for with this build and tinker it until you find it's working for you. That's if you are avert to going meta, of course, and you want something different. That's entirely with you. But this is a solo power rifle Deadeye build that I hope you'll find easy to use and extremely powerful. Starting then with the kit, all of the pieces are power pieces, power precision ferocity on every single piece. Now the uh, infusions go with whatever infusions you like. I've done a mixture, some are precision and some are power. The rune that I've chosen to go with is rune of the ogre. And the reason is this, points one to five are exactly the same as rune of the scholars, which would be normal for a power build. But in part six, you're sacrificing the 125 ferocity, it's true. But in Scholars, the plus five damage is completely contingent upon being above 90% health. Now, if you manage to get your burst off and kill what you wanted to in that first burst, that's great. But if you've got a group or if the battle is going to be longer, you are going to drop below 90% and you will lose 5% damage. This build might sacrifice that 125 ferocity, but you will get an overall damage boost of 4% consistently, no matter what. Also, you'll also find that the summoning a rock dog is really useful. It manages to draw aggro quite often, and it's a lot tougher than you think. Even today, it took down a level 77 elemental uh, when I wasn't even targeting it whatsoever as I was just running around. So. By all means, swap that out for a rune of your choice. Swap it out even for scholars if you prefer what would be the meta. But otherwise, I'd recommend giving this rune a really good go. Weapons wise, I'm looking at rifle. Now I've got pistols in the other slot, in the other weapon slot here, but um, I wouldn't really be using pistols. I would only be using rifle. Uh, for this build. They're there if it's handy. So you can swap this for whatever you want there, whatever you find handy, whatever you find useful, for whatever skills it will bring up in your skill bar that you think will complement the rifle. I'm concentrating on the rifle. The uh, other swapped weapons can be whatever you like. So for the rifle, again, I want a power build, power precision, ferocity. Again, uh, do take infusions. Again, see here, I have mixed. I've got a power and precision. Now this sigils I've chosen is sigil of force, as you'd expect on any power build, a 5% damage. But I've also gone for sigil of the night. Again, you can swap that sigil for any sigil of your choosing. But the reason I've chosen it is this. You always get the 3%. So you're always going to have the 5 plus the 3%, 8%, no matter what. So you've already increased your damage considerably. Remember that end of scholars thing only gave 5% when you're above 90. This sigil of the light on its own will give you 3% without doing anything. But when it's night, you get an extra 7%, meaning that sigil is worth 10%. Now, when you consider that the night day cycle is not like our hours, and in actual fact, in a prolonged fight, remember we are looking at PVE dungeons and fractals here. In a prolonged fight, you might well find that you've entered a different cycle quite inadvertently and triggered a nice 7% extra a night. That's what I would go for. Over here, all of these things are, of course, the power precision ferocity, as you would expect, the power or berserker, as it would be called. Uh, again, infusions of your choice, but I would mix some precision and power. Let's have a look at the build now. So this is what I've gone with for Deadeye Power Solo Rifle. Let's go through them. Starting with Deadly Arts. Stealing inflicts poison. You'll want to mark your foe to start with, and that's a stealing tool that is the mark. So it inflicts poison to start with, and if you were downed, you'd have poison. Now, because this is a power build, your poison is not gonna be super effective, but there it is. Now on this one, if you were carrying daggers, you might want, as you're off from the rifle, you might want to switch to this one, it would give you 160 power just by carrying the daggers when you swap to them. Uh, 
Alternatively, if you weren't carrying the dagger, you could still gain the 80 power if that's your choice. The reason I've gone for this, but either is fine, the reason I've gone for this is you deal damage nearly 2,000 worth and gain life when stealing. So you've just finished off an enemy and you are doing a steal on a new enemy. You've lost a bit of life. This will get you back nearly 2,000 of health and will do a cracking 2,000 damage straight off the bat. These ones weaken targets when you poison them. You've had to poison them, so at least you've weakened them, ready for your power bursts. So that's good, but you can't do anything about it. Same here, deal increased damage to your target for each unique condition upon them. You've got uh, weakness there and you've got poison there, so at least you're doing another 4% damage from that. Here I've gone for gain power, then extra power while you are revealed. So you constantly have the 80 base power no matter what's happening. But with some of our utility skills, we will be going stealth. That will drop your power when you are stealth, but sometimes you need that. But as you come out of that stealth to take your shot, a nice boost of 120 instead. Lastly, I've gone for Executioner. Deal extra damage when your target is below the health threshold. As soon as they drop to 50% or lower, you will do an extra 20% damage. Really is ideal for a power Deadeye rifle build like this to finish them off quick. Next we have critical strikes. The three you can't choose from that are um, compulsory. Critical chance is increased while your health is above 90. Gain fury if you strike an enemy whose health is below that threshold and gain increased critical damage against foes whose health is above the threshold. What I've gone for here is I've started with this, my signets of power. Now, some people like to go for the twin fangs, deal increased critical damage while your health is above the 90%. And that's pretty good, actually. That is good damage, good critical chance, big bonus, especially, uh, well, when you are doing it from the sides or the rear. That's a great option if you like. But the one I've gone for is this Signets gain reduced recharge time, an additional passive effect. So my Assassin Signet, which I'm taking, will gain me might automatically every time I kill something. And my Signet of Shadows will give me stealth every time I kill a foe. Just taking away some heat considering I'm picking people off with an assassin's rifle. Finally, the signal of malice heals when I kill a foe. Without having to trigger it, I will get a heal every time I kill something, which is fantastic. On top of that, of course, should I want to trigger any of them, there's a 20% recharge. Practice tolerance, gain ferocity based on your precision. Your precision is pretty high. And this will give you extra ferocity based on your precision. It gives us an extra 10% of the ferocity. Now, ferocity is how hard your shots or attacks hit. Okay. So power is the damage. Precision is the accuracy. And ferocity is how hard it hits. So extra ferocity there is very welcome. Finally, invigorating precision. You are healed for a percentage of outgoing crit damage. The healing is increased while you're under fury. So that's just quite nice to get um, some healing back while you're doing crit damage, which on a power dead eye rifle build, you are gonna be getting some healing back. The alternative to that, if you didn't want something healing, you wanted something more to do with attacking, that's landing a critical hit while you're under the effects of fury will gain you massive ferocity and this one increases your critical chance increase while uh, stealth. Alternatively, yes, if you find yourself alone with your rifle, needing to be able to pick up a little bit of extra health here and there, that is really good. Finally, of course, dead eye. The ones you can't choose, you've got the dead eyes mark, which is this mark. It replaces the stealing mark. You mark your enemy with that before you start to attack it refreshes when they die and um, that's instead of your steel but will act and will trigger the same things as a steel will also dead mark dead eyes mark which is that recharges if your mark is defeated so in other words you haven't got to wait for the cooldown if you've killed him 
25 seconds would be the cooldown otherwise. But if you've killed the target that you marked, that will refresh instantly and give you a little hill. Iron sight, damage dealt to your marked target, marked by that again, is increased and damage taken from your marked target is reduced. So as swell, another bonus of having this mark is 10% extra damage for free and 10% damage reduced from the enemy that you marked. Okay, let's have a look at the choices. Malicious intent, marking a target, which I always do, or striking your mark with a stealth attack will immediately grant malice. Here's your malice points here, increasing the overall effectiveness of every bit of damage that you do. This one is essential if you're taking rifle, gain precision, gain additional precision while wielding a rifle, enter stealth when you dodge. So as you're moving around, you don't always want to be getting up and jumping uh, and taking yourself out of the air. Sometimes a forward roll while you're still in a crouch position will just bring someone just into view, just into range. Uh, this will put them in stealth so they won't see you initially at least and the precision increase is fantastic Finally, I've gone for be quick or be killed now your options are Maleficent 7 which increases the amount of malice also restores initiative Which is these you need these to be able to activate your skills It restores some initiative every time that reaches full now it's increased to seven so you've got to um increase how much malice you've got in order to get the initiative but you'll get seven initiative which is a, it's a good option it really is this one is fire for effect hitting your mark target with a stolen skill which would appear here after you've done that this stolen skill would appear at f2 grants boons to allies around your mark and to allies around you it's the weaker of the choices the one i've gone for is be quick or be killed gain quickness when marking a foe so in other words you've marked the foe now all your actions are quicker for the next four seconds your power and precision jumps massively by doing that 200 power 200 precision that's the bell let's have a look at the skills Obviously with the rifle, these are your preset skills. You can't change them with the, with the rifle. No point really going through them. These are the ones I've chosen. Signal of Malice, well, as you see, I've got the healing on the kill. I've got the healing ordinarily. I've also got the healing, which is the passive, when you attack. So by rattling out your shots, you're getting healing. When they die, you're getting healing. And if you're still desperate, you can always trigger it on a reduced cooldown as well. Increased power is a big thing to have actually, it's 180, but you can get 5 seconds of 540 power if you are desperate to get something down quickly. Also of course the increased passive is the might you get on the kill. Movement speed, none of our other skills have given us uh, an increase of movement and you're going to need it darting around as you will as an assassin. Extra things to happen there if sure you trigger it. And of course the um, extra passive that we've implied is the two seconds of stealth when you kill something. This knocks away guys that are getting too close. Stealth for three seconds allowing you either to move to a new position very quickly or just to finish them off because they just got too close. Push them back, gives you some extra seconds to finish them off. Here you've got two choices. This is remove revealed and stealth yourself. So if someone else was around, you would remove their reveal and you would stealth for three seconds, renewable every five seconds of the maximum count. Try not to use it all up or you've got a 45 second recount, but even 45 seconds for, for an elite skill is not a long time. That gives you extra shelf, extra sneakiness with your rifle, your assassin, your dead eye rifle, it's good. But alternatively, you could take this one, calling in three thieves to come and support you. They come for 24 seconds. It's a two minute cooldown, so be aware it's a long cooldown. But as far as uh, extra fire support and aggro and comfort, actually, it's uh, a very good option to have instead. I'm going for the Shadow Melt, however. Okay, so that was the solo power dead eye rifle build dead easy to use dead easy to implement good for all the things that we've mentioned before tinker with it have some fun i hope this was helpful to you